FTD fam, welcome back to FTD Speaks. So we haven't done one of your videos in a long time. This video is from There Is No Clash. A lot of you guys are asking to do more and more videos from them. And this one is about, you know, what actually determines the sex of a baby and apparently the quran mentioned this before modern science did so let's take a look and see you know what are the passages that are quoted what was said and see what else we learned from this video and then we're going to discuss a little bit of it at the end humans have been living and reproducing on this earth for ages and ages but none of that would have been possible if it weren't for the female egg and the male sperm coming together to allow the human population to carry on and flourish it's a well-known fact that without the female egg and the male sperm coming together life would be impossible only with both will a baby be created this is the gift of human life one of the most precious and miraculous gifts bestowed on mankind but though we've been Probably procreating and reproducing for eons, science has only recently begun to understand this complex process. Think back to the movies that depicted the olden days. A queen is pregnant and give birth to a baby girl when it is a male heir that is required. Uh-oh. Then she's promptly blamed for the baby's gender by her husband and his family. Well, guess what? According to basic genetics, the king and his family are all fools. If they must blame someone for the gender of their newly arrived bundle of joy and diapers or nappies if you're British, then it is the king <laughs> they should blame, as we now know that it is the male sperm that determines the sex of the baby. Right. But this important and interesting question about creation was only answered relatively recently. Who or what determines the gender, sex of a baby? Is it the egg or the sperm? Is it a combination of the two? Scientists and scholars argued about this for ages before determining the truth, namely that the sperm, which carries either an X or a Y chromosome, is what determines a baby's gender, since all female eggs are the same and carry only the X chromosome. Thus, when a man's sperm carries the X chromosome, you will have XX and a baby girl. But when a man's sperm carries the Y chromosome, you get XY and a baby boy is, uh, is the result. Male, yeah. Of course, today this is common knowledge among the scientific community, but that wasn't always the case, as many a poor old queen will tell you. The first indication that sex chromosomes were distinct from other chromosomes came from experiments conducted by German biologist Hermann Henking in 1891. While using a light microscope to study sperm formation in wasps, Henking noticed that some wasp sperm cells had 12 chromosomes, while others had only 11 chromosomes. Also, during his observation of the stages of meiosis leading up to the formation of these sperm cells, Henking noticed that the mysterious 12th chromosome looked and behaved differently than the other 11 chromosomes. Accordingly, he named the 12th chromosome the X element to represent its unknown nature. Interestingly, when Henking used a light microscope to study egg formation in female grasshoppers, he was unable to spot the X element. Based on his observations, Henking hypothesized that this extra chromosome, the X element, must play some role in determining the sex of insects. However, he was unable to gather any direct evidence to support his hypothesis. More than a decade after Henking's work, in 1905, Nettie Stevens surveyed multiple beetle species and examined the inheritance patterns of their chromosomes. In 1905, while studying the gametes of beetles, Stevens noted an unusual looking pair of chromosomes that separated to form sperm cells in the male beetles. Based on her comparisons of chromosome appearance in cells from male and female beetles, Stevens proposed that these accessory chromosomes were related to the inheritance of sex or gender. That very same year, 1905, was a big year for genetics, Edmund Beecher Wilson made the same discovery as Nettie Stevens completely independently of each other. So both Edmund Beecher Wilson and Nettie Stevens are credited with discovering the chromosomal XY sex determination system. The fact that males have XY sex chromosomes and females have XX sex chromosomes. So this information in the grand scheme of things is considered to be a relatively recent discovery. Mm -hmm. However, the incredible and almost unbelievable part is this. The Holy Quran, 1400 years ago, and with amazing accuracy, stated that the sex of human babies is determined by the sperm. This ancient book not only outlines the specific sequence of events that lead to creation, but it also states with 100% accuracy that the sperm are the sex determining factor. 
God says in the Holy Quran, he has created both sexes, male and female, from a watery bit of the semen which has been ejected. The term watery bit of semen in the verse above is referring to the sperm component of semen. Now, there have been some who've said that the ancient Egyptians predicted how the creation process worked even before the Holy Quran was sent down. While this may be true, but most likely is a myth, ancient Egyptian wasn't translated until the last century, while the Holy Quran made its statement 1400 years ago. The Egyptians were using hieroglyphics for 3,400 years until they died out about 1,600 years ago in AD 400, when the Rosetta Stone, an ancient artifact that became the key to understanding Egyptian hieroglyphics, was discovered in 1799, attempts to decipher it began. But it was only in 1822 that Jean-Francois Champollion, a French scholar of ancient languages, announced that he had succeeded in reading the hieroglyphics and cracking the Rosetta Stone by using the Greek language as a guide. Yeah, this Greek very nicely proved that Egyptian hieroglyphics day, were now. not deciphered during the 7th century, the century of the Holy Quran. So in conclusion, the Holy Quran is the only ancient book that states specifically that the sex determination is caused by the sperm and that the sperm determines the sex of every baby. From 1400 years ago, a scientific fact which was later discovered by Edmund Beecher Wilson and Nettie Stevens only in 1905 when they discovered the chromosomal XY sex determination system, namely the fact that males have XY sex chromosomes and females have XX sex chromosomes. Okay guys, so that was pretty surprising and you know, it was also mentioned in another video that we did regarding uh, birth and uh, fertility, the birthing process that we did from There Is No Clash. I reacted to that video, describes it. But yeah, she, now this video, she broke it down that it's like, you gotta focus on the language. Like specifically, it's talking about the sperm. That is the thing that creates the person, you know? It's dependent on uh, the sperm and that's from the male. And based on what chromosome that's carrying, can be uh, male or female. So, okay, so yeah, we all know this. And this is something that I think is just mind blowing. You know, uh, obviously the term chromosomes and X and Y aren't used, but you know, the, the reality that, whoa, this is saying like, yo, the sperm is the thing that determines the baby, that is pretty, mind-blowing guys for real and you know i just want to go back to a point that she mentioned in the video about before uh, a woman of royalty a queen or something would give birth to a, a girl and if you needed a male heir to you know sit on the throne after it's like she was blamed you know and women you know just outside of even this issue they were blamed for a lot of things they were mistreated in different ways and now also uh, just even the idea of, let's say, DNA, for instance, right? DNA is, for the most part, a modern discovery. But how many people went to prison for crimes that they didn't even commit? And then after the, the discovery of DNA, they were released. It's like, oh, we actually found the right person who did this crime, but so now you can go. So I say this to say, so women mistreated, now, okay, that that's taken away. They're no longer blamed for birthing a girl and also people who were wrongly imprisoned for crimes that they didn't commit were both now brought to justice or I, I guess more knowledge was brought to light and it changes how we relate to people all from scientific discoveries and it leads me to ask the question what other scientific discoveries are there you know what are we missing and I know uh, it's been said that the Quran is a book of signs, right? So what are the signs that we should be looking for? And like what other scientific discoveries are, are there in these signs? Because you see how scientific discoveries can change the way human history goes. It can impact lives. It literally transforms communities, you know, figuring out how to produce fire, like creating the the you know having the scientific formula to produce fire just on the spot change the world i think it is for humanity's benefit that we constantly are looking and examining things because once we get it once we once it clicks you know and again science for sure can change we are constantly learning new things and evolving the actual science so again that's not to say that oh 
if you make a scientific discovery, that is going to be it. That's the end all. Let's look at computers, for instance. We discovered how to create computers. And then computers were a series of codes and algorithms. Uh, and then we did learn how to digitize it, digitize these codes and algorithms, how to make them move and everything. And then now we made 3D images now. And now we have holograms and things like that. So we can pr build off of these scientific um, discoveries. It's not that the scientific discoveries end all. So yeah, it's, uh, you know, this can lead us down uh, some major rabbit holes, you know? So uh, I say, yeah, keep looking out for, for the signs, you know, what are signs? Don't just think that, you know, what you see is the end all be all. There's so much more to it, so much more to life, so much more to learn, so much more to just discover. So I gotta say that I really enjoyed this video. It got my mind going, you know, my mind is just running now, like what are some other signs to look at? Because everything that is like a sign for us, we find something in it. And it could be, I don't know, 10 signs that we look at that can lead to a hundred discoveries. Either way, that's all I got for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I did. Leave a like if you did. Don't forget to leave your thoughts and comments down below and I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.